Good evening everyone. Uh, today is 28 September 2013 and I am here in front of you to analyze many important statements you know, of uh, RBI's new governor Dr. Raghuram Rajan. So last, last week Dr. Rajan on 28th uh, September he actually announced his uh, first monetary policy statement and into that he surprised many people, surprised basically the market and the industry people who were actually expecting uh, some kind of you know uh, lowering of the market interest rate from the RBI's new governor because they they were you know kind of thinking and expecting that by lowering the market interest rate Raghuram Rajan will help spur the economic growth of the Indian economy which is right now actually sagging but instead of lowering the you know market interest rate bank rate or repo rate or other you know the policy rate he actually surprised everybody by increasing the repo rate and he says that his major concern right now is inflation and he said that he wants to fight inflation and you know and for that he has increased the repo rate and after his policy announcement with the with his you know meeting with the news you know uh, journalist, you know, people, he actually said that RBI is, you know, uh, anti-inflationary. He cut the repo rate by, by the way, by 25 basis point. Uh, so by doing that, he's saying that he's fighting inflation. And as I said in the meeting with the journalist, he said that RBI, is, RBI of course, is anti-inflation. So I want to first analyze this statement of Mr. Raghuram Rajan that, uh, whether RBI is actually anti-inflation and what is the meaning of inflation when Raghuram Rajan is saying that RBI is anti-inflation. See, we can only kind of, you know, understand, rationalize his argument that RBI is anti-inflation if we define inflation in the way in which the mainstream economists are defining it. That means uh, the rise in the general price level. So when they say that their, the prices economy-wide are rising, when they say that that is inflation, then we can kind of a little bit understand what RBI's new governor Rajan is saying. But as I said in my past video blogs also, that definition of inflation is wrong because inflation is not rise in the general price level. First of all, there is no such phenomena as general price level. And obviously there is no rise in the price and whenever uh, that general price level and whenever there is you know, rise in the price that is the effect of inflation. So inflation is rise in the supply and money of supply of money and credit out of thin air. So that is inflation. So when we take the right definition of inflation that it is an increase in the supply of money and credit then we know that RBI is not anti-inflationary but actually RBI is the sole cause of inflation because RBI is the monetary planning, central planning authority in India. Money market, the supply of money is directly controlled by the RBI. They are the ones who determine, they are the ones who are printing, you know, uh, rupees, you know, the currency. And they are the ones who are determining the money supply growth rate. So when, they, when RBI is, Rajan is saying that RBI is anti-inflationary, he is kind of self-contradictory because RBI itself is the root cause of inflation. They are the ones who are inflating the money supply and then that money supply is you know entering the economy and you know lifting different prices different sector wise. So obviously this statement of Raghuram Rajan that RBI is anti-inflationary is obviously wrong. RBI is not anti-inflationary. RBI creates inflation in the first place and then is kind of giving lip service to this you know inflation war i'm sure see many people are saying that uh, raghuram rajan is kind of showing everybody that he is an independent central banker and central bank autonomy is sanctimonious and no government can kind of intervene but that is a joke because you know indian central bank was nationalized in 1949 itself and it is wholly owned by the indian government raghuram rajan's appointment is itself done by the government bureaucrats and politicians so obviously he is obviously under a lot of pressure you know to listen to his government masters right now inflation is very high so obviously uh, he is in pressure from the government because inflation can you know make you win or lose elections so UPA government is very much under pressure they are already under pressure because of 
you know spat off you know corruption scandal so they are there must be pressurizing Rajan to bring inflation under control. Recently, the WPI has jumped up from 5 point something percent to 6 percent. So that's why he's saying that his main focus right now is on inflation. So he's, but again, as I said, on one side he's saying that he's fighting inflation and on the other side, on the same day, in the same policy announcement, he also lowered the marginal standing facility rate by 75 basis point. He also reduced, cut the daily CRR the cash reserve ratio from 99% to 95% and by doing these two things it released new fresh you know liquidity means money in the market so on one side he's saying that he's fighting inflation RBI is anti-inflation and on the other side simultaneously he is also creating more inflation so he is contradicting his own you know words but in any case he is confused because his underlying economic theory is confused but in any case, you know, that was last week, but recently what happened when he got some prize uh, in Frankfurt, right? Uh, he was, you know, given some kind of, you know, financial prize. So he, when he was in Frankfurt uh, at that time, he questioned the merit of low interest rate policy to spur economic growth. So I, I want to focus on this thing, right? Because Rajan is a uh, is i think as far as i know is the first central banker who is actually asking this fundamental question this is the most important question which all we all must be asking right now that whether the central bank can increase economic growth you know whether central bank can do any of its you know given objective whether that is you know uh, control of the rupees you know valuation in the market or whether that is you know determining or controlling the unemployment rate or you know kind of you know determining the economic growth rate whether RBI is you know capable of doing all these things and obviously at least you know as I said the answer I'll tell you in a, in a while but Rajan is the first central banker as far as I know he's asking this very important question so I actually think that he's the right guy you know to ask this question because his past work shows that he's kind of familiar with Austrian works, especially works of Mises and Hayek. So obviously he understands the central bank has some role to pay into all these business cycles and all this chaos. So he's kind of be skeptical, I guess. So that's why he's he asked this question into that particular conference, that that price speech, and he said that um, Reserve Bank of India Governor Raghuram Rajan is questioning whether current ultra low interest rates are the right way to return to growth after the financial crisis, right? He said that central banks were heroes for kind of stopping the financial meltdown in 2007, but obviously he's wrong. That meltdown was created by the ultra low interest rate policies of central bankers, prior policies, you know. It was the prior economic boom that was the problem and that bust was a result of that prior you know, artificial boom which was created by these ultra low interest rate policies. But in any case, as I said, he's, he's asking these questions and he's saying that uh, he is kind of unaware of the answer. He doesn't know the answer, but he wants people to kind of uh, discuss this, you know, issue. So, you know, what I'm saying, you know, and this is what my answer is to, doc to, to Dr. Raghuram Rajan, that Mr. Rajan, obviously, the ultra low rate policy what they call ZARP, the zero interest rate policy, is the root cause. It is not actually part of the problem. It is the root cause of all our economic problems, you know, for example, whether that is inflation or boom boost cycles or the transfer of, you know, wealth from the productive class of economy to the unproductive class, that is the rising inequality of income and wealth whether it is unemployment, all these economic problems, you know, are the result of this money printing, loose monetary policy of central bankers. So by printing a lot of money, they, they create this artificial, you know, money out of thin air. And by creating this, you know, money supply out of thin air, what they're doing is they're suppressing the market interest rate, you know, from, you know, their natural level the natural rate of interest so there is this divergence between the natural rate of interest and the market rate of interest the money rate of interest and because of the suppression of the market interest rate that is creating the boom bust cycle because that is you know 
creating this malinvestment you know the artificially created cheap credit is going in the sectors where that credit is not and that credit is not actually coming from the real pool of genuine you know real pool of saving right you have on something created something produced something you know sold something and then earned something and out of that earning when you save something the credit is not coming from that real saving this is just saving artificial saving which is just created out of thin air by the central bankers so obviously that boom which is generated by this ultra low policy of central bankers is unsustainable because it is not backed by real saving of people and that is result right when what happens that when when they are pumping this money into the one sector mostly the heavy capital goods industry the resources are going into that particular industry and and in that industry the prices are rising and whenever the laborers are paid into that particular industry they will obviously go and because the time preference the consumption saving you know ratio has not changed the time preference haven't changed so what happens is all those laborers will go and demand different goods and services in the market so that will create price inflation the prices will start to rise and what happens after one point when the price rise becomes unbearable rbi or central bank will put a break on their loose monetary policy and then they will suddenly start to increase the market interest rate and that's what you know breaks the back of the economy that's what creates that boss that recession when the interest rates go up that halts that artificial boom and when that boom you know kind of boss then we have the recession so what the pro and when the recession start we have high unemployment problem the growth will go down right we will have all kind of uncertainties because uh, the rbi and the other central bankers will continue to intervene they will not allow the bus to run its natural call you know course and liquidate all the mal investment which took place in the prior artificial boom so uh mr rajin of course your loose monetary policy is the root cause of all our problems right so there is no question about that and if you want to understand if any of my reader wants to understand then they will have to understand the austrian economics literature the austrian school of economics has the answers of all these problems right especially you have to understand the austrian business cycle theory which you can find on mises.org website all the books are totally free to download for you you can just go there and read the works of ludwig von mises murray rothbard frederick von hayek right richard von strigel ludwig lachmann yeah uh, hurta di soto if you read all this economist work it is on the austrian business cycle theory and Austrians know why this boom bust cycles are taking place and the root cause is this loose monetary policy this money creation out of thin air and the artificial suppression this so called low monetary this low interest rate regime about which you know RBI governor rajan is very much worried right now so that is the root cause of our problems so the answer is that if that is the root cause of our problem then what we'll have to do is actually we will have to stop printing all this money right the only answer is that we have to kind of completely dismantle the fiat currency monetary standard right which is right now worldwide after 1971 we have to completely dismantle that system we have to bring in the pure gold standard we have to bring in the 100% reserve banking right because the commercial banks are also responsible for creating money out of thin air via their money creation process because they work on the fractional reserve banking standard so as i said you deposit 100 rupees they will only keep let's say you know 10 rupees out of there and lend the uh, other 90 rupees to some other third party and by doing that they create 190 rupees out of 100 rupees so that is also money creation out of thin air so we have to stop that fraudulent uh, practice of fractional reserve banking also so as long as rbi is existing and as long as other central banks and as long as the fiat paper currency system is in place as long as banks are allowed to continue their fraud fractional reserve banking practices boom bust cycles will continue and inflation will continue and unemployment problem will remain with us you know when we will stop all these things when we will go back to free market capitalist system we will we'll go back to commodity money standard we will go back to legal moral 100% reserve banking standard only then all these problems will stop 
So, you know, I actually, you know, kind of congratulate Rajan for asking this question, but he remains confused because he's saying that he doesn't know the answer. Now, the problem is that his confusion is going to kill so many people because when he's confused, he's still the governor. He's still going to determine interest rate arbitrarily and that arbitrary determination of market interest rate is what is responsible for all these boom bust cycles and all these current account deficit problems, a high unemployment and all other problems. So if, if Rajan is confused, then I think he should resign from his post. He should not go and mess around with the market. He should not go and mess around with people's life, right? Uh, but I, I know that he's not going to do that. Uh, let's see that he tr he tries to understand why this is a problem and he, he kind of stops in all kind of money printing process. And as long as that is not happening, again, nothing is going to change, right? And as I said, after this uh, policy announcement, the stock market has crashed. So the situation remains right now pretty much precarious. And my advice remains the same. Continue to accumulate gold and silver. Stay away from all the paper promises. And just take care of yourself out there. Okay, so I think this is, you know, for today. I wanted to analyze Rajin's statements. I will come back again in a week or two weeks' time when something important will happen in the Indian economy. So by that time, I think you just take care of yourself, and I'll see you once again in the future. Thank you very much for watching me, and good night.